two of 2023's greatest gaming titans, Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom. These games are both contenders for Game of the Year and have been at the top of most anticipated game lists for years now. They both feature extremely powerful heroes, unleashed on a massive open world, each with their own unique methods of transport, combat, stealth, and crafting. But who's stronger? Hyrule's hero Link? or everyone's favorite friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Today, we're gonna find out. Link, the hero of the wilds, is the latest in an unbroken line of reincarnating heroes, spanning millennia across the ancient and mystical realm of Hyrule. The goddess chosen knight, he alone wields the Triforce of Courage and is worthy to wield the blade of evil's bane, the Master Sword. Now more than 100 years old, Link has battled and defeated countless monsters, the terrifying Calamity Ganon, and even the Demon King himself, Ganondorf. Link is primarily tasked with protecting Zelda, reincarnation of the goddess Hylia and princess of Hyrule. Proficient in nearly every sort of weapon, swords, spears, greatswords, clubs, axes, bows, and more. Even brooms, mops, and pot lids. Anything he picks up instantly becomes a deadly tool of combat. Link is extremely athletic, which serves him well in both combat and traversal. He has a crazy grip strength, able to scale sheer surfaces with ease. He's very dexterous, performing pinpoint accurate acrobatics mid-combat. Jumps, flips, and spins, all while wielding enormous two-handed weapons, shields, and even full plate armor, which can weigh up to 200 pounds alone. When dismounting a horse, he effortlessly launches himself at least 10 feet into the air, flipping with grace and power. Link easily has superhuman strength. He's able to send dozens of monsters and even guardians flying with single backhanded sword strikes. He can lift and carry enormous stones over his head, push even bigger boulders and metal spheres around, and even manage to parry a gigantic falling chunk of stone, probably his greatest strength feat. Link is also incredibly sturdy. He regularly gets blasted with boulders launched by Octoroks, and the stones shatter apart when they strike him. He can survive bomb explosions that obliterate rock, strikes from giant monsters like the Malduga that launch him nearly 20 feet into the air, lightning strikes, searing flames, and even being frozen solid. He can fall great distances and suffer minimal damage, although drop him from high enough, and if he doesn't hit water, he will die. On the offensive side, Link has an enormous arsenal, but perhaps most important are the various arrows he has access to. Whether discovered naturally or fused himself, his arrows can burn, freeze, electrocute, home in on a target, fly extended distances, and explode. Depending on the bow he's using, arrows can even be multiplied a single one splitting into five separate projectiles. And speaking of fusing, Link has access to the Arm of Raru, first king of Hyrule. Using the ancient magic of the Zonai, he can utilize specific and powerful abilities. Ascend allows Link to instantly leap up and through structures above him, briefly pausing time as he does so. Recall reverses the flow of time, rewinding an object through space back to where it was moments ago. This can be used on objects Link has moved, objects that that were moving due to natural forces like gravity or inertia, or even projectiles sent by enemy forces. Ultra Hand allows Link to pick up and move inanimate objects of nearly any size or weight, including in a combat capacity. He can also connect these objects together, but this is a separate from his fusibility. Fuse allows Link to attach materials to his tools, weapons, and arrows. Elemental monster pieces or bomb flowers add an additional destructive kick, and Zonai devices like rockets, springs, fans, and lasers all create unique combat applications. Finally, Auto Build allows Link to summon existing designs for Zonai tools and vehicles he's crafted in the past. Now, it's important to note that this ability could be very overpowered. Link could summon an enormous mech with all-terrain wheels, 15 laser turrets and 10 flamethrowers, but this is a slow ability and isn't practical to use mid-combat. For this reason, I won't be counting auto-build as something Link has access to in this fight. In a different battle where both combatants had prep time, this would be free reign. What Link does have access to, however, are the spirits of the sages. Tulin, Yenobo, Sidon, and Riju all travel around with Link in their astral forms. He's also joined by Minoru, whose spirit inhabits a physical construct. 
With these sages' blessings, Link is essentially a one-man army, a force of six powerful warriors, all in one tiny elf man. And of course, part of this includes the sages' special abilities. Tulin can create a powerful gust of wind, Yenobo can blast off as a projectile, Sidon launches a burst of water, Riju calls down lightning on any target Link strikes with an arrow, and Minoru can be outfitted with weapons and materials, and piloted. Perhaps the most iconic of all of Link's tools from the latest two games in the series is his paraglider, a cloth contraption. This allows him to safely fall from any height and travel great distances in a slow downward glide. In combat, its primary purpose is to stop Link from taking fall damage after he fires arrows mid-air, which leads us to the final important note about Link. Link has access to bullet time, or the ability to slow time during critical moments mid-battle. When he perfectly dodges an attack, Link is able to momentarily unleash a flash of high-speed strikes, the Flurry Rush. And when mid-air, time slows down even more, allowing Link to aim and fire off arrows at impossible speeds. Link is strong, fast, durable, versatile. He's one of the most agile and skilled melee fighters in gaming, and he's only bolstered by the vast array of Zonai abilities, devices, and the power of the sages. A one-man army, he packs incredible power into that five foot two frame. Bitten by a radioactive spider as a teenager, Peter Parker's life was uprooted as he gained spectacular superpowers. Complemented excellently by his chemical and engineering genius, and spurred into action by the untimely death of his Uncle Ben, Peter adopted the identity of New York's resident, friendly neighborhood superhero, the Amazing Spider-Man. Now, with many years of crime fighting under his belt, Peter has toppled citywide criminal organizations, corrupt billionaires, mutant monsters, and all manner of supervillains. He's defeated Electro, Tombstone, Doc Ock, Shocker, The Vulture, Scorpion, Black Cat, Mr. Negative, and many more. The primary abilities gifted to Peter by the Spider Bite include super strength, enhanced speed, durability, agility, and endurance. He can lift and toss around cars, punch through concrete, stop a speeding truck with his bare hands, and even tear apart Dr. Octopus' tremendously strong arms. Peter can leap several stories into the air from a standstill, run faster than a speeding subway train, and pluck rockets out of the air and send them back to the sender. He's extremely durable. He's been smashed through brick walls, blasted by Shocker through a vault door and laughed it off. He's been stabbed, poisoned, electrocuted, burned, and shot countless times. He even has a pretty substantial regeneration, healing broken bones in a matter of days, and can even recover from surface level wounds mid-combat. Spider-Man is very skilled in both combat and acrobatics, creating a unique martial art that makes use of his tremendous strength and dexterity. He often leaps, twirls, and flips out of danger's way, launching himself like a spring to deliver devastating punches, kicks, knee strikes, and elbows. His strikes often launch adult men high into the air, and his vast display of finishing moves show off his incredible ingenuity in combat, often making use of his environment. Walls, ceilings, crates, mailboxes, vehicles, almost anything can be turned into a makeshift weapon in a second. And that's not where Peter's genius ends, not even close. He is an incredibly gifted inventor and strategist. He invented his own web shooters, compact devices stored on his wrists, as well as the web fluid, an extremely versatile substance with astounding tensile strength and countless applications. Their primary function is to launch strings of web that allow him to swing across the city, cutting his traversal time down tremendously. Calculating the physics of every maneuver in his head on the fly, Peter becomes a living pendulum, cascading between skyscrapers hundreds of feet in the air at dizzying speeds. But the web fluid is far more than a vehicle. It can be used to restrain enemies in a concussive burst, to halt speeding cars and trucks, can catch falling people, and even enormous machinery like helicopters or cranes. Spidey is very knowledgeable in the fields of chemistry, biology, engineering, criminology, programming, and synthesis. He's designed and created multiple suits that are flexible, durable, and aerodynamic. Some are bulletproof, enhance speed, strength, defense, include AI bolstered mechanical appendages, and even explosion proofing. He's also constructed a myriad of gadgets that strengthen him in battle. 
The suspension matrix causes an anti-gravity field to lift enemies into the air. The spider drones seek out and blast opponents. His subsonic waves disperse crowds of people. Electrified taser webs, he even has an EMP and a HUD for scanning and tracking in an open environment. In the last testament to his intelligence, Peter has synthesized both viruses and antidotes, reconstructed a handprint using separately collected fingerprints, and hacked and reprogrammed countless pieces of technology. What I've yet to mention, which is probably Spider-Man's most iconic ability, is his stickiness. He can, at will, stick to any surface with any part of his body. This allows him to scale walls, walk on ceilings, stick to enemies, and perform an unending number of acrobatic and combative combinations. Using all of these abilities and gadgets, much of Spider-Man's combat is actually done preemptively, making use of stealth to quietly capture and subdue enemies without being spotted. By placing traps, snatching up enemies from above and ensnaring them in webs, or even silently launching them off of buildings, things. Peter can take down dozens of criminals with minimal violence. But because this requires prep time and foresight, much like Link's Zonai constructs, I will not be including any of this type of combat in the battle. Finally, the spider sense. A minor form of precognition, this alerts Peter when danger is about to strike. This includes danger to him and anyone in his immediate vicinity. With this advance alert, Spidey has dodged machine gun fire, attacks from a rampaging rhino, shocker, Doc Ock, and countless nameless goons. The biggest advantage the spider sense offers is during combat against multiple foes. Peter can dodge strikes from a dozen different enemies without having to see them, and even manage to briefly hold his own against most of the Sinister Six, all thanks to this sixth sense. Spider-Man is the most popular superhero of all time, and for good reason. Peter's incredible powers, genius, and creativity make him one of the most formidable street-level characters around, often fighting enemies well above his pay grade. He may be friendly, but in a fight, you better be glad he chooses to pull his punches. Before we get into comparing the two, I just want to say that over 98% of my channel's viewers aren't subscribed, which is bonkers to me. Uh, if you want to see more content like this about writing, theorizing, and power scaling, be sure to hit that subscribe button and consider giving me a like or supporting me on Patreon. It really helps out the channel and lets me keep making content like this for you guys. Anyways, back to the fight. So, how do these two stack up? Well, let's start with raw strength. Is Link actually strong enough to injure Spidey with his attacks? After all, Peter has been knocked around by some crazy forces, most notably when Shocker blows him through this bank vault door. Well, consider for a moment, the Divine Beasts are incredibly powerful. Va Meadow's laser carved a hole through Hebra Mountain 10,000 years ago. And Calamity Ganon took four of these lasers simultaneously and survived. Yet Link is strong enough to damage and kill this same beast, even without the Master Sword. Link's melee attacks, individually, are easily small building level. We see this when he shatters apart steel crates or parries back boulders launched at him. Link could definitely hurt or even kill Peter if given the opportunity. And Peter? Scaling him against Rhino, who casually tears apart buildings, we see Spider-Man is able to hit him with enough force to stun him, more than it takes to break apart those buildings. Compare this to Peter's feats against Fisk, Electro, and Doc Ock, and Spidey is definitely large building level in his attack potency. He's throwing haymakers that could easily put Link in the dirt. So the question becomes, are either of them actually hitting each other? If it isn't obvious, Link is much slower than Peter in terms of traditional movement speed. Peter can run, jump, and climb far faster, and his traversal when web swinging is in an entirely different league, peaking somewhere north of 60 miles per hour. But what matters here is reaction time. How quickly do these two fight? Well, both have a slowed down perception of time in critical moments, spidey sense and flurry rush. By timing enemy attacks normally, and then comparing them to when Link dodges, we know that when Link does a flurry rush, he moves and reacts at 10 times his normal speed. Bearing that in mind, when using a spear, Link can make a maximum of 10 attacks in just under a quarter of a second. Now, Peter's spider sense allows him to dodge gunfire from what appears to be a standard AK-47, which have a firing rate of about 10 per second. Of course, 
He doesn't stand still and dodge these bullets individually, but instead reacts to the first bullet shot and moves out of the firing path in about one tenth of a second. Spidey can and has been snagged by slower attacks, but he's likely too fast for Link's flurry rush. However, believe it or not, Link is actually much faster in the air. Once again, if we take the time it takes for him to drop from a controlled height and then compare that to how long it takes the same drop in bullet time, we see that Link can fire off arrows at 20 times normal speed when in freefall. With a high quality quick shot bow, Link can fire 1.05 arrows every second. That means in freefall, he's launching an astonishing 21 arrows every single second. And that's with a single shot bow. If he uses something crazy, like a Lionel bow that shoots a spread of arrows, that's 105 arrows every single second he drops through the air. Far, far faster than anything Peter has ever dodged. On the flip side, we know that the fastest attack Link dodges in any of his adventures is the Guardian's laser, but this actually has a half second warning with its flashing eye and beat. Phantom Ganon's sword swipe is actually twice as fast, with only a quarter second window to react and dodge it. We know from both cutscenes and gameplay that Peter fights much faster than that, he barely telegraphs any of his attacks to his enemies, compared to Link or any of the monsters in Hyrule. Aside from arrows shot in freefall, Spider-Man fights faster. Now, to take a look at some of these boys' special abilities and gadgets. Peter's suspension matrix is handy when fighting crowds of enemies, so he'd probably deploy it as soon as he saw the sages appear. But unfortunately for him, this would likely make Link more dangerous. He has experienced fighting in anti-gravity from various locations up on the Sky Islands, and would likely just start launching arrows in bullet time. Bad for Peter. Now, Peter's concussive blast is also going to be ineffective, as Link has shown he can push against torrents of powerful wind. If Peter happens to use electrified webs or strikes, this could be useful, as we've seen that Link is very susceptible to electricity while using metal equipment. These can be activated with very short notice, meaning Link will probably not have the foreknowledge to swap out his equipment in time before he gets zapped. The spider drones would be helpful in combat as well, offering a bit of balance to the battlefield as Peter is fighting six powerful enemies at once. But a single arrow from Link or Tulin is knocking these little helpers out of the sky. And of course, it's very likely that Peter could tag Link with a a normal web blast, knocking him back and possibly sticking him to a wall. But seeing how large regular goons are able to break free from this sort of trap in mere seconds, this would be no trouble for Link, who canonically has a lifting strength of at least a few tons, if we take into account how he fuses enormous steel spheres to his shields. Link is not fast enough to avoid the webbing, but it won't slow him down much at all, because he'll just break out. Jumping over to Link's Zonai abilities, Ascension does practically nothing for Link in this fight. Spider-Man can leap up to meet him very, very quickly, no matter what structure he's scaling. Ultra Hand would be an interesting maneuver, because the objects Link manipulate become essentially weightless to him. If Peter tried to use webs to wrestle them away or pin them back down to the ground, he'd probably fail. But it wouldn't be difficult to simply dodge out of the way if Link decided to wave a truck around in his face, seeing how Peter regularly dodges this sort of attack all the time. Recall is easily Link's greatest ability in this fight, as he could send back web blasts and thrown objects, completely catching Peter off guard. That said, this is only likely to work the first time. After witnessing Recall in action, Spidey will very easily be able to understand and predict how recalled objects are going to act. Remember that he regularly performs physics calculations in his head all the time, and this one tiny wrinkle to add to those equations is not going to slow him down. So, bearing all that in mind, who wins? Well, Peter is stronger. He's more consistently lifted heavier weight, thrown stronger punches, and survived deadlier attacks. His passive regen is also better. As he fights, he gathers focus and can slowly heal himself. Of course, Link can also heal himself, but he doesn't have an infinite supply of food, at least not in this scenario. Peter also fights faster with better reaction times. He dodges incoming attacks roughly 2.5 times faster, one tenth of a second in his average reaction speed compared to Link's one quarter of a second. Spider-Man has much better speed and mobility, but if you put him in his ideal environment, a city with lots of structures to make use of, you do run the risk 
of letting Link leap from one. If that elf starts the freefall, Spidey is getting turned into Swiss cheese by a maelstrom of arrows from 20 to 100 every single second. And when we consider that many of Spider-Man's go-to combos include launching enemies into the air, this is likely a lesson he'll learn very early into the fight. And if Peter happens to open up with a suspension matrix, this will happen immediately, ending the fight practically before it even starts. But as long as Link doesn't get the opportunity to enter bullet time, Peter takes this fight easily. Pound for pound, he's stronger, faster, and more durable than Link. It would be a great fight, but there is no way Spider-Man loses. Well, uh, that would be the case if Peter fought Link one-on-one, -on -one. but this isn't a one-on-one -on -one fight. There are six combatants for Spider-Man to fight, Link and the five Sage's spirits alongside him. And this is really where we get to the crux of this battle. Yes, Spider-Man is very experienced and skilled in group fights. The precognition of his Spidey sense allows him to fight more opponents than he can see all at once. It would be reasonable to assume that he could deal with the spirits of the Sages while also contending with Link, but this is only when dealing with normal people. Peter handily lost against just four members of the Sinister Six, Rhino, Scorpion, Mr. Negative, and Vulture. Electro was there, but he wasn't participating in the fight. So let's be generous to Spider-Man and say that each Sage can only fight at half the speed of Link. They're still collectively throwing upwards of 20 attacks per second at Peter, far faster than anything he's dodged. And also, the Sage's spirits can't technically be defeated on their own. They'll only stop attacking once Link is put down. And though Spidey is smart enough to figure this out, he likely won't be able to do anything about it. If this fight were between Breath of the Wild Link and Spider-Man, Peter would come out on top, even considering how great the champion's abilities were. But because Raru's arm connects Link to each of the sages, he has become a far, far greater threat in battle, and he comes out on top. Even without a single Zonai device, Link wins. Now, maybe the results would change if Peter got his hands on a certain symbiotic substance, but that's a question for a future video. Stay frosty.